Confidence is formed around friendships, really. And I think uh, all, all through, as members came and went, if, if we ever needed somebody, we'd always think of someone we knew. We never advertised for musicians. And I think it's a bit of a fluke that there just happened to be this bunch of people that did have the talent to carry it right through, and the ideas, the imagination, the songwriting talents. It's a sort of situation I can't imagine happening very often. It's usually people with talents get together because of them. But in this situation, it was friendships. That's carried through to tonight, where um, we've all gelled again, mainly because we still all have good contacts with each other. We've all, we're all sort of sympathetic with each other. We started off well in England when we got there in March 76. We went straight into the studio and, and did uh, our second album. It was called Second Thoughts in Australasia, but it was called Mental Notes in the Rest of the World. And we, we had a good time recording that, did that through to May. The album was finished and, and we got a deal with Chrysalis Records. Then we had a long wait because we couldn't get an agency. We wanted the Cowbell agency that handled groups like Yes, the big bands at the time and they insisted on auditions and that took about three or four months so that was the that was the quiet part and we got very frustrated the songwriting dried up and we just got bored but then we they finally said yes and it all took off we did i think about 70 shows in about three months or something but we found that we didn't do a song on the album that was a very good single that the radios would play we had no airplay at all we had good critical reaction from the press but no radio play, so I think the touring sold the album, if it sold much at all, I don't think it did really. Until the first shocking review came in, which took a while, I mean, we were just ridiculously well reviewed for quite a while. There might have been the odd complete hate, but most of them were pretty, you know, respectful, but we got a couple of amazingly bad ones in England, and that's when it started to, I suppose we turned inwards a bit more and just thought, well, we know it's good, but perhaps it's not going to be seen as that, you know. We went through a period of, but we, we never doubted that what we had was good and worth sticking to, but we did have a lot of doubts for a while there, I suppose, that it was ever going to be received. I don't know, we're just stubborn fools, you know. I mean, the interesting thing is that in New Zealand, the voice of authority for people of our generation, you're a bit younger than me, but the, well, the voice of authority always seems to have come with an English accent. Yeah. I just couldn't wait to get over there. I was, I, when I think back, you know, I had such a romanticised view of England. I used to get Tiger, was it Tiger? And Roy of the Road, and I was infatuated with soccer, which was a pansies game in New Zealand. And so I played rugby, but I dreamed soccer, you know. I remember I learnt all the positions off, and I used to get Neil up against the garage wall and pound balls at him, and he was quite short for his age for a while, and I had him as the goalie. So, you know, I just, was, and it was soccer, it was the Beatles, it was, England, I imagine cobblestone streets, little urchins running around and just, you know, such a airy fairy nonsense really because when I went over there it was like that for about two weeks and then gone. You know, for the first two weeks it was like this, it was like fairyland or wonderland and then I just saw through, you know, to the creaking groaning carcass that it is. But, um, you know, not to say there's not a lot of good art coming out of England still or just good people generally there, but it ain't Roy the Rovers. We were in three flats, probably about two or three a flat. Uh, the girlfriends had gone with us. A lot of the time I spent rehearsing because waiting for this agency thing to be resolved you know, so we could get the work. Um, and once we started touring, well, it's just the old hotel. You know. That was pretty tiring, touring the UK, because it's too expensive to stay the night in any of the cities. So if you go to Manchester or Bristol, not so, not so much Bristol, that's quite a way away. But you have to drive back to, the, to London each night. Mm -hmm. Get back about four in the morning, get up the next day at 10, go out somewhere. So the whole, tar uh, the whole touring thing was pretty exhausting. But So all of it, it was like three months of nothing, and then three months of murder. <laughs> doing the 
the album, we should have been sort of sat down by the record company and said, this is the UK, the, the, the music situation here revolves around getting songs on the radio because it really is a national coverage radio, so it's not like America where uh, all this, there's little stations in every town and they're all different. BBC covers the whole country in England. We should have been sat down and told that we need a single for this, for the Mental Notes album. That didn't happen and we didn't, we weren't into that sort of commercial side of it. And I, th and I think that's where we missed out. During the USA tour in 77, Phil Judd left, and so we had needed, wanted to find a replacement, a, a guitarist. I came back to Auckland for a holiday at the end of that tour to ask Alistair Adele, uh, an old friend of the band's, but he said no. And while I was back, I saw Neil Finn and my brother and a few others playing a band. <clears throat> and I thought he'd really developed and he was good. So I went back to the UK and the boys were in the throes of auditioning hundreds of guitarists. And the thing was looking a bit desperate. So I suppose desperation, yes. And I suggested Neil and they sort of, oh, I hadn't thought of Neil. He wasn't a great guitarist, but I, I, I was very impressed with the songs that he'd been writing. So I thought, two songwriters, you know, just like the old days. So we gave him a call and he said yes straight away and turned up about a week later. You joined the band at a very hard time though, didn't you? 77, 78. Heading into a pretty Split hard ends time, was, yeah. 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 But that was good for me in a way too. It gave me, I suppose, maybe an extra year or so to learn my trade before things picked up again. I don't know. Yeah. And we, we had a, true. the one year that we did have, the, 78, that was, you could look at as being bad in every possible way, business-wise, was actually very good from the band's point of view. I think we grew musically a lot in that year. Did you we have to work hard? Absolutely. Did you yeah. have to work hard that year? Well, we sort of did, yeah, we had to work hard trying to convince the Social Security in England to give us the doll. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we had to work hard in other ways too. We rehearsed a lot, we just played a lot. It was a very frustrating year, but we certainly came out of it with a lot of songs. Produced a lot of music. It mm. really made the band. I think it made Split Ends as we are today that year. Certainly. Was, was that really a year when the band could either have split up and you could all have gone your separate ways? Yeah, we stared at well, it. Was or you come through it and you come through it stronger. It was more just before True Colours, really. It was our darkest day, wasn't it? It was in New Zealand, I, I seem to remember. No, it was, it was a hotel room in Sydney. Oh, and that's we right. We talked about it. For the yeah. first time, we actually, Neil and I said, said, well, it might be just around the corner, you know, we might have to break up. And we actually talked about what we might do afterwards. I think that tonight, is, it's been, you know, a great experience for all of us because we've all um, kept contact with each other as friends since we've stopped playing together and just to get back together and have a jam, I suppose you could call it that, or just rejuvenate some of the old songs. We've all found that a great experience. And um, I don't think it's so much that we're going to be playing tomorrow at Sweet Waters or, you know, anything like that. This um, theatre is hold so many memories for all of us because that's where we started. That's where we did our first big shows. I think we just enjoy tonight. You know. If we didn't play tomorrow, it wouldn't matter too much. I think we're just having a good time playing together.